Well, good morning and welcome back to Big Girl Hunters. Um, it's a bit of a different one today. You join me down in a, a different lake, and this is a different syndicate. This is uh, the Long Lake, um, CWA Fisheries Long Lake, and, and I'm here um, on the exchange week, uh, members exchange weekend. So I'm part of a um, of, the, of the syndicate on an, one of the other lakes, and um, kindly, um, the owner has, has let us all sort of basically draw. Um, out of a hat to to do 48 hours on one of the other lakes and um this particular one is in in sort of the the redden area it's called long lake I, I i've admired this uh lake for a very long time um it's it's absolutely stunning and there's some massive lumps in there you know quite a few fish sort of get into that 40 you know in that 40 bracket and some absolute stunners big fat um zip lins and um, big brute mirrors up to 40 pounds scaly ones dark ones you name it it's in it and it's it's absolutely stunning um, so for that alone, I've always, I've always, it's always been on my radar. So for a chance to actually fish it, um, is, is a, you know, it's a privilege to say the least. It's now sort of eleven o'clock, on a, and uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's been a bit of a nightmare really this morning. I, uh, I've had a nightmare, a nightmare day, day really to be honest. Um, I uh, got up, left at four. Um, Met Ollie at the, at, the, at the garage. We had sort of breakfast, and then I I got here and I looked uh, on my messages to get the gate code because um, Coops had uh, sent me the gate code, and I somehow deleted that. So I sort of had to message around a few people to get the gate code. I then I didn't realise that this place doesn't have a toilet like the uh, like a uh, like Roach Pit. So I uh, <laughs> I was sort of waiting around, walking around the lake, um, sort of trying to find a fish early morning, and it's dying for a shit. So I had to get shit in a bucket straight away my um you know just it's, it's quite a long long walk to the lake from the car park and uh just as i got everything loaded up my i realized my my barrel um tire was completely flat so i didn't know whether it had been done so i had to pack all the gear back up into the car back out the gate lock the gate back up down to the garage pump my tire up it was fine so all these things it's been it's been one of them mornings but luckily on my first sort of spent a good sort of I'd say about half an hour 40 minutes walking around the lake um, early morning and um, I found I started down at down at the, the, the shallower end sort of the more narrower end and it, it was very void and as I sort of came closer and it, I sort of found myself towards the other end middle of the lake I'd say um, going down towards the deeper end and um, I saw a lot of fizzing in front and it was the only area that I saw anything and then I saw a fish roll so it, it, it was good and I, a few, a three, I think two or three swims down that way. Um, another one of the Roach Pit lads had, had sort of put his put his bucket in, so I think he, he might have seen something as well. So I um, then uh, got all my bits and, and, and plonked in here, and then I was in here for no longer than probably half an hour, and I've seen a few shows, so it's looking good. Um, it's quite quite a tough tough little lake I hear. There's not many fish in it. I think there's around 40 fish. That sort of that sort of mark. I think about 10, 15 acres something like that it's quite a long sort sort of long thin lake as in uh, the name uh, describes it perfectly long lake but very very clear waters um not too many fish to go at i hear from from some of the other members that it's quite quite a tough lake um even tougher than roach pit some people are telling me but we'll, we'll see about that um you know you've got to be in it to win it i'm on fish and stranger things have happened so i've, I've at the moment i've just where fish have been sort of fizzing i've just put out um two singles at the moment and put a couple of just a couple of boilies over the top two s core um pop-ups out there and a few boilies over the top and we'll, we'll see what happens but um like i said i have found a drop didn't want to go spooking them but later i'll get out the the marker rod and the deeper and really find a few areas to to sort of target and I, what i want i think i'm going to give them some bait there's some big old girls in there and um they look like they love a boilie so i'm going to really go for it and uh give them some well that's that's sort of my plan but we'll see we'll just go by here really and if if like i say i'll stay here i've, I've not got anything packed yet or i mean set up yet so i'll sort of fish off the barrow until um i see anything further but it's looking like here's the spot to stay because there are fish here and then um, i feel i feel pretty lucky to have found them pretty easy i mean it's that time of year sometimes it can be a bit tricky finding them but I found them the water's fairly clear so you, you know up the tree you can see them it's all good and uh hopefully we'll have one
Better chop my worms and then the blood. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good morning, welcome back to Big Go Hunters. Um, it's on the second morning now here at uh, the exchange weekend at CWA Fisheries Long Lake. Um, it's been an absolute cracking session so far. To get a fish on the first night on a lake, on a low stock sort of water like this, it's, it's known to be pretty tough for this one. Um, you know, the lads tell me that I sort of fish both roach pit in here, that this, this is even a little bit more trickier, which um, I don't know if I quite agree, agree with that, but Nonetheless, it's, it, it's not a runs water, that's for sure. And I um, managed to have one out on, on the first uh, first night, which is um, pretty lucky, really. That is a, um, definitely cheesed it out there with some luck. And um, yeah, I've been, I've been, I managed to find the fish um, pretty early on. Like I say, um, yesterday morning it was pretty quiet, but already this morning there's been, I've seen five or six different fish showing out in front of me, so. One of the bailiffs, Zeph, he was telling me it's quite an odd lake. Um, you know, you sort of, it's will be 30 degrees and, you, and, you know, and um, you might get a bite sort of in the afternoon in, in, in sort of 15, 16 foot water or whatever. It's just very odd and, and, I, and I can certainly agree. I mean, the pressure yesterday was 1,026, pretty high. Um, it was sort of 20, 22 degrees, pretty sunny. A lot of the fish were cru cruising. I, I, I was sort of sitting on my hands waiting because m my rods have been out the night before. Um, or longer, they've probably been out for coming up to sort of 28 hours or something like that um, and uh, I just you know with the, with the fish being over it all day I just wanted to make sure that they were sit, sitting proper so I quickly did a rechuck and literally put three force bombs over the top 15 minutes later it ripped off um, and that is 14 foot uh, 14 and a half foot on a clear spot um, with you know pressure like that and sun it just doesn't really make sense um, but it, I can't complain because it's an absolute banger it's mostly day bites I hear pretty much sort of 90 90 percent day bites in this lake and um, so it's, it's sort of nice to kind of wrap up things get normally when you're getting everything ready for the night you know it, it's, it's sort of the opposite you know you kind of switch off a little bit I mean I'm sure that people do will and probably do catch them at, uh, catch them at night but it definitely seems you know since I've been I've been lucky enough to see um, another fish as well um, I'll show you the photos of that at some point really nice called the pale 12910 I believe it was really really nice fish and um it's called the pale one and it's uh, compared to some other lakes it's not that pale so it just sort of tells you the caliber of the, the fishery I mean you saw the one that I caught which is called the big dink um, is a uh, really really nice it was 23 8 there's some absolute units in here there's quite a few fish over the over the 40 pound mark um, and there's two really big fat perfect linears really in here which are which are like zip lins like real fat ones like reaching up to that 40 pound mark as well which I'd love to catch there's a couple of brute mirrors, um, some scaly ones. There's all sorts in here, but it's a very, very impressive stock, and there's a lot, a lot of fish over the 30 pound mark, and uh, you know, sort of reaching into that 40 pound mark. So that's that's what we want. Um, will I have another one? I don't know. We'll see. Stranger things have happened. I'm, I'm feeling like confident. Like I say, um, the bait's working, rigs are working, and it, uh, hopefully. It's just a matter of time until I get another fish. Hopefully, one of the big lumps in here, because there have been a couple of lumps out there showing on me. So, the girls are about the big girls are on the dance floor. They uh, <laughs> hopefully they're grabbing away on my on my bait. I'll show you the bait later. I, I, I've brought um, a mixture of boily um, particle and pellet, my sort of sim similar mix. But I chucked in a couple of a. Uh, few 18 millers because I knew there were some big boys in there just to just for something a little bit different I think as the years have, have got on in the last 10 years people are moving sort of more and more over to smaller boilies really um, I, back when I went I got oh, another fish rolled over there go on 
few rod lengths off the left hand rod. It, it you know, an 18 miller or even a 20 miller um, was, pr was pretty normal on, on most sort of average carp waters now. But now you just don't see them anymore. It's, it's sort of your 15 millers, 12 millers, 10 millers, that sort of thing. Um, but now, yeah, you don't really see the 18. So I, I chucked a few 18s in there, um, and um, they, they've been soaking up in particle juice and, and all the rest of it. They're really, really soft. You can just smash them. So I'm sure the fish are get, getting on them. Like I said. 10 minutes after spawning on a lake like this you just don't expect it so it just shows you anything can happen um just takes that one bite and you could have a 40 in the net and i, I was happy just to see a fish before um the night before when the lad, the lad caught one sort of late afternoon early evening and it was just exciting to see, see a fish from here um the other lads that i fish with some in roach pit have gone so there was a split over to um, between here and uh, Lil Molsham, so they've gone over there. Um, Ollie, Dan's over there. Cooperman himself is over there with them, having a bit of social. I haven't heard anything. I don't. From what I heard yesterday, they haven't had, haven't had anything out yet, but I imagine they will. It's only a matter of time. I think there's a few fish to go out in there, so hopefully they'll they'll get one. And uh. I'll, I'll report into you soon. Right, so here's the mix I've been using. It's a right older carpy stuff. Three different type of boilies in there. S-Core um, 1 and 2. And then these beautiful 18mm Ultraplex. They're just, they've been slugging in a few days now in this in the particle water. Got um, yeah, mixed particle, pigeon conditioner, lots of hemp. And a uh, and a bit of pellet which is why it's gone all gloopy now and I'm sort of putting pellet in with it as I'm spawning just so the pellets the pellets hard and I'm putting that out and the fish come um, sort of 10-15 minutes after spawning five over the top little ones I'm not putting a, you know I came with a full bucket so they've had they've had a fair bit of bait like I said there's not a huge amount of fish in it but they are big and so I thought I'd give them a good mix and yeah I'm fishing escort pop up over the top and that's what's doing me the business there we go, good stuff. Well behaved. It is for sure. Yeah. Right, I just want to talk to you about um, the rig I had that fish on. I've got it out on, on both rods, um, same hook baits as well now. But um, you see, you would have seen me use this one before. Um, so you have a faithful sort of Ronnie or spinner rig as like people like to call it. There it is there. Um, that's just a, that's a Richworth Tui Fruity uh, pop, pop up, but I had the fish on a, an S-Core pop up. But um, this is the rig I originally cast out there um, yesterday uh, morning when I, when I got here. It's a size 4 um, curve style hook. Pretty sharp this one. Um, down to a little swivel. I've actually got um, a slight bigger swivel on this one just to just to help it sit down on the bottom and quite a bit of putt you see there. I like to overweight it so it sinks, I'll show you in a second the water, so it sinks quite quick and sort of nailed to the bottom. Then some boom and just a kicker. Nice and simple. 
a bit I'm fishing it is quite a clear spot a little bit of like lime weed and, and a fairly soft it's not um, a crackdown it, it's firm like I, I'm getting a good pre presentation it's clean um, I've seen in the deepest it's a tiny bit of bottom weed but it's not must be clay or, or something it's um i mean the rigs aren't coming back smelling so it's not sitting in silt or anything so uh yeah it's all good and um that's the the rig that's been doing doing um the beers hopefully i can nail another one and get one of the real lumps out of here it just sits nicely there waiting to be picked up but if you see we go out into this deeper deeper water you see Quick. I have it sinking quick. So sick of